morning, dear friends, and greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am so happy to visit you through this video and encourage you and let you know that there is a God in heaven who cares for you. And you don't have to climb up to heaven in order to find him. He is right there in your heart. And the Bible says, he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. For the last two days, we have been considering the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ accomplished through his blood. And I hope all of you have gotten those points and uh, took down the references. This morning, I would like to consider with you for a few minutes the power of Christ's resurrection. Our text is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 18. I would like you to take down this and then um, sometime today you please read this passage. This is the hope of every born-again Christian who live a constant life for the glory and honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The key to this hope of a Christian is his belief in the fact that Jesus Christ died and he rose again. This is the ground. The Christian faith rests upon this unchanged, unshakable foundation of Christ's resurrection. Christ's resurrection has guaranteed, listen very carefully, his resurrection has guaranteed the resurrection of all who believed and remain true and loyal to him till he comes. This is the hope that the Lord has given to his church and therefore to each believer who follow him. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 12 to 24. This paragraph, small paragraph in that chapter will help you understand the tremendous, glorious power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ who came and died on the cross and rose again. This hope of a Christian focuses on the coming of the Lord. Paul calls this event parousia. The word simply means a presence or a coming. This word became the official term for a visit of a person of a high ranking uh, official and especially of a king's and emperors visiting their provinces. By using this word, the Apostle Paul seems to be hinting that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ will be a revelation of God himself. And at the same time, a powerful visitation by Jesus Christ, the King. This then is the hope of every follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord. This Christian hope has a threefold expectation. And I want you to listen very carefully what this threefold expectation is. Number one, it is an expectation that Christ the King is coming. The one who died and rose again. It was Jesus Christ who was arrested, tried, sentenced and hand over to the Jewish people and to the soldiers to be taken and to crucify. It is the same Jesus. And Roman soldiers do not leave until they made sure 
that the victim is completely dead. So it was the same Jesus who died on the cross. Number two, this hope also contains the belief that when he comes, the Christian dead will come with him, who is in his presence now, and thirdly, the Christian living will join them. Now this is important for us to understand. Many people are confused about what happened at the rapture and what happened to those who are dead and gone in the Lord and what happened, what will happen to those who, of us who are still alive and following Jesus faithfully. And I want to know in the rapture when the trumpet sound the, 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 the dead Christian who are now resting in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ wherever he is, they will come with him and appear with him in the air. And remember, when the rapture takes place, Jesus comes in the midair, he will not come down to this earth. That happens in his second coming when he will come down with the church, with the entire church and establish his kingdom. But at the rapture, the dead Christian will be raised. They shall be resurrected and they shall thus receive the resurrection body. And those who are dead and gone to be with the Lord and resting now with the Lord, they do not yet have the resurrection body. They are waiting for that day when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and when they rise, they shall rise with a resurrection body. Hallelujah. That is the hope. And what happened to the living Christian? The living Christians along with them shall be changed and shall be glorified and they too shall receive a resurrection body along with the dead Christian and together they shall be caught up and meet the Lord Jesus Christ up in the air, in the skies. And from there the Lord shall take them to wherever he is. And this is a certainty that the Lord has given to his church. And remember, the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees us our own resurrection, our own change. As the Bible says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when the trumpet shall sound, we shall be changed and changed in a twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. And everybody who listens to this, if you have this hope, I am sure your hearts are stirred up within you and you feel like shouting, glory, hallelujah. You praise the Lord. Go ahead and praise the Lord. For this is the hope the Lord has given us. Some difficulties and sometimes uncertainties and anxieties. But my brothers and sisters, don't be discouraged. Hang on there. Everything is going to change. There is going to be an end to all these uh, problems in life. There is a new beginning. You will not experience this thing again once the rapture takes place. And that time is closer than you realize. And the signs all around us points to the second coming of Christ, not the rapture. And before the second coming, at least seven years before that, the rapture will take place. Get ready. Be ready. The Lord is sending out his warnings to the world and to the church. He is at the door. Let your hope arise and courage be restored. Your time of your redemption is drawing near. With this, I encourage you to look forward and live for him and be ready. 
Father, there are people who may not have this assurance who are listening to this. I pray that by your Holy Spirit to draw them to yourself and open their eyes to see their need for the Savior. And they will humble themselves and in repentance they shall come to you and invite you to come into their hearts. That they may experience that forgiveness and that salvation by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. So let some souls be born into your kingdom today. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful good day. He loves you. Amen.